Oh, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're doing a little project uh, making some remote control sewer crawlers, and we're using a strong hand Build Pro precision welding table. And going to demonstrate how some of the tooling works in fabricating uh, some short production runs like like this. We're we're building about 18 or 20 of them, and so it's worthwhile to have some fixturing uh, that we can do and uh, save us a little time. So the first thing we did, we welded front flange uh, bars on, and, and actually we used the Nomad uh, portable welding table built by Stronghand because we weren't quite ready yet with the uh, with the big one, and the portable one just sets up in in a couple of seconds and. Uh, actually found out it was it was it had some handy features that uh that uh I utilized main mainly being able to tilt it up at just the right angle to weld down inside of it and get a good little downhill run because there's an area where the, where uh, the weld size is kind of critical if, if the weld's too lumpy or big you have to get in there and grind it because there's some stuff that goes inside so being able to tilt the table was like the handiest feature ever on this thing and get it up just right convenient comfortable to weld or wasn't so tired afterwards because it was hot and humid that night so we got all these front uh, flanges put on they're all going to be machined off flat and then finally we got the uh, the uh, build pro table all put together that didn't take long it was just a, a bunch of a bunch of bolts putting those slats on and then uh, now we're getting out the tooling package that's designed to work so well with the uh, with all those holes those precision CNC drilled holes so um, what we're going to do as we put the other end on this thing there's some stiffener bars that go on the other end of this thing that uh, where the drive motor mounts up inside and it's a really powerful motor so it has to have some stiffener plates welded inside and just because otherwise it actually will torque this uh, this uh, 3 16 wall tubing and uh, it, it doesn't work right if it does that so these stiffener plates are pretty thick I think they're about three quarter inch thick and they're milled out with a hole uh, drilled in them and the bosses get welded in there where the drive axles go through and uh, so the motor mounts up inside and the, the bolt hole pattern has to be good when they're all done otherwise the motor won't won't mount up in there so um, always the problem has been on this is, is uh, getting a good position to weld it comfortably and so that's what I was going to do with the uh, the build pro table was figure out once I got it all tacked up and fit in all, all, uh, all 15 or 20 of these things um, use the build pro table to get a good way of clamping them up at just the right height and that was a piece of cake because the the stuff was just laying there when you look at it you see immediately how to use it and uh, these little fastener here is that spring-loaded ball bearing. It's not like you have to put nuts and bolts to hold things down. These are really quick fasteners with spring-loaded balls, and they just pop right in. And when you tighten the set screw, the balls lock and they won't come out. So uh, just with uh, and nothing flat, these 90-degree uh, blocks were put up at different heights and uh, allowed me to, to, to check out a couple different heights really quickly with a really quick lay, a way of clamping and uh, so I got a good height and I found out the lower one was is a, is a better height to see more comfortable so I went with it I'm going to show you in a minute how easy it is to, uh, to to clamp something up see I'm holding it with one hand I went ahead and put a boss in one just to kind of hang over the lip and then insert the little clamp with one hand tighten it up and it's done it's kind of important to be able to do things with one hand when you're working by yourself because you don't always have somebody to holler hey give me a hand with this now I could have done this I could have put the riser blocks upside down taken off a of one of the slats and put at a 90 degree and just use that as a really quick quick way to clamp things but I, I just the quicker way was just to use the 90 block there's lots of different ways to do everything so once I got it clamped up I'm frying this in here. Uh, pretty hot short circuit. I'm on the high end of the range. I think probably 20, 21 volts, 280 to 300 inches a minute of 035 wire, 75, 25 argon CO2 gas. And I'm just trying to, you know, stay kind of on the front of the puddle, but then back up into the puddle occasionally too to build up because this is going to be machined off. So if, if it gets machined off and there's low places, that's bad. You got to come back and rework it, add a little weld, remachine it. Uh, rework is bad when you're trying to make a little money and trying to keep the machinist happy too. So um, I want to put plenty of weld on here. Plenty of weld because it machines off like butter anyway. So that's what I did. Alright, that's just one simple use. Stay tuned for a lot more as we finish this sewer crawler uh, job up. Thanks for watching. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com